But I do believe most of us would fit into one of these two. The first one is a legitimate offense. This is those of you who have every right to be offended. Like something truly happened. You were a victim in it. Somebody said it. They came against you. It was a plot. It was premeditated. It was first degree offense. They thought about you in the midnight hour and they said, how am I going to go after them and hurt them? And they did it. One of our Campus pastors tells this story. He says, I got into a fight in the seventh grade with a, with a 16-year-old eighth grader, and he had a full beard. And he said, the boy's name was Joseph. And he said, I got in this fight with Joseph, and it was terrible. And I went to my youth pastor, and I said, listen, man, this kid at school, I'm trying to be like Christ, but he, he just whipped me yesterday. And he said, well, man, what you, you got to do is, is turn the other cheek. And he said, I did, and he hit it several times. Um. Truth is, we all have a Joseph, and you may work with one, live with one, attend church with one. So we all have a person in our lives that if you think about it, some of you can think really fast because you're walking through this journey right right now, and you think to yourself, man, I got a Joseph, and I'm tired of that guy. And you don't connect with the Josephs in your life. Again, you want God to side with you. You want God to to rid the world of the uh, Josephs, but John 3.16 always gets us because it says, for God so loved who? The world, and the world includes all of our Josephs. So we have to realize from a supernatural uh, position, from a God who loves unconditionally, he still loves your Joseph, and he still loves my Joseph. And so there is legitimate offense. People who find us, people who run into us, they say nasty things. They don't care about your feelings. They railroad you. They talk bad about you. They gossip about you. Um, They tell lies about you any chance that they can. Chances are that's more about them than it is you, but still you're on the receiving end of that, and it hurts. The second category would be illegitimate offense. And this is those of you who think you've been mistreated. So it's not something true and concrete and factual. It's more about a feeling, a perception. I think they are out to hurt me. I think they are trying to split this family. I think that you said it. I think I told you this once, and now I'm hearing it circle back around to me. It's got to be you. You're the one who's talking about me. When Riley was very small, we were on a ministry trip. We were speaking in in Kentucky, and um, I know you know this, but there's a lot of sinners there. And so she, we we decided that we we were going to take her bowling. And so she's really small, and she's really excited, and I'm excited because it's her first trip bowling. And so I let her pick out a bowling ball, and she gets the bowling ball, and she's holding it with two hands, and. She's walking, and, and I don't know when the last time you've been in kind of an, of, of an older bowling alley, but there used to be uh, where the balls would come up, and you would, you would get it, and then there was a step, and you had to step up and then go out to the, the alley. And so she well, was walking, and she had her bowling ball, and she didn't see the step. So she hit it and went forward, and it was perfect. It was like a movie. She just kept the ball out in front of her and fell, and wham, hit it. And I just put my bowling ball up and I said, well, we got to go to the urgent care. I didn't even look at it, see it. I heard it. And I knew that's, a, that's definitely a stitch sound. And so um, sure enough, she got up. She was very upset, split it wide open. We took her to an urgent care and I begged the doctor, can you please just glue it? Just glue it. Why? Because I knew what was coming. And so I didn't want to hold her down. I didn't want stitches. I didn't want the drama of it. I didn't want the trauma of it. I just wanted you to throw some glue on there and let's act like nothing ever happened. Let's go back and bowl again. And so he said, listen, you can go and chase down another doctor in town, but I'm not going to glue it, man. It needs stitches. And I said, all right. And I said, but listen, she's going to give you grief. And he said, I've, I've stitched many moving targets. So I said, all right. So we got in there, and they covered her face with this little thing and had a hole, you know, if you've ever, ever, ever had stitches. And, and, man, I mean, she was just sweating. She was so worked up, so anxious over it. 
And um, she was crying, and he was giving her, you know, shots to numb it up. She didn't like that. And so I kept trying to, to peer under the napkin, and he was getting frustrated with me because he kept pushing it down, and I was, I was right there. And, and, and so I got under there once, and she had kind of tilted her head, and I looked under the napkin, and she looked at me, and she goes, I done with you. we still talk about it because it broke my heart. I was like, oh my gosh. And, and here's why is because she thought I was trying to hurt her. She thought I'm trying to, I mean, it, my, my dad heart, I'm like, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to, I mean, I've been pleading with this guy to just throw some glue on there and he won't do it. I'm your advocate, but she was done with me. And I was like, why? I took offense. Sir. Why are you done with me? You know, I'm trying to talk to a one-year-old. Why are you talking to me and not, and not, not the doctor? And, and so I think that happens to us more times than we want to admit. That there are people in our lives who try to help us, but we take offense, we're hurt toward it. Um, life is messy sometimes, relationships are messy, friendships are messy, church is messy, career is messy, community is messy, and this is why scripture tells us where there are no oxen, the stable is clean, meaning this, it's great until the oxen show up, and then it's dirty, and he's saying this, church is great until we got here, and your job is great until everybody shows up tomorrow. And, and, and so there, there are no problems right now at Chick-fil-A this morning because nobody's there. And so where there are no oxen, the stable is clean. 